I sang that song for more than 60 years, a song of praise to Joseph Smith, the prophet of the Restoration and founder of the LDS Church, the church I served as a bishop for five years. I knew the church was true. I was a faithful Latter-day Saint. My life has been built on certain truths, but wishing doesn't change the truth. Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. When I finally learned the truth about the real history and doctrines of Mormonism, I realized that I was following the gospel of Joseph Smith and not the gospel of Jesus Christ. I have come to learn that many others have made a similar journey out of the bondage of religion and into an authentic relationship with Jesus. And that's what this show is all about. Courageous people who want to share their story hoping that you, the viewer, will discover the same new life in Jesus. So if you're a Latter-day Saint who is struggling with questions or seeking a genuine encounter with the Savior, we invite you to join us tonight. We have a joyful message that we want to share with you. Good evening and welcome to the Ex-Mormon Files here in the heart of Salt Lake City. I'm your host, Bishop Earl. And I'm pleased that you're spending some of your evening with us. I hope you learned something. Tonight I have a very special guest, Adam Guyman. Uh, Adam, welcome. We appreciate you being here and sharing your story. Adam, you'll notice, is in a wheelchair. And uh, I want to get this right. He was born back in 1977. Yes. That's okay to say. Yeah. But in, in 2001, he was in a car in a bus accident. He was just relaxing in the bus and the bus driver thought he was going to run into a power line as I understand it and so he slammed on the brakes and uh, Adam was injured and has since been suffering from what's called spatial diffuse global weakness if that's right. Yes that's correct. And so uh, for the last um, 13 years or so he's been in a wheelchair and um, we but he was also just so you know he was born um, legally blind, I guess, as well, right? Uh, yes, and that's hereditary. Oh, yeah, other members of your family? My mom and my brother and sister are both legally blind as well. Uh, oh. My dad is not. Well, it's just amazing. I, I know Adam from, uh, we attend the same church, and he gets around unbelievably, and I'm really proud of him. I'm, I'm impressed with what he's been able to accomplish in his life, and you're, you're going to hear an interesting story tonight. So tell us just a little bit about the, your history as a Mormon. You were born in the church, were you? Uh, yes, I was born in the church. Uh, my mom and dad got married in 1970, see, 1976. Married in the temple? In the temple, yes. Yeah. And then I was born in 19, you know, April 25th, 1977. Yeah. And then my sister was born about a year and a half later in uh, 78 or 79. I, and then, uh, and then my brother was born in eighty, and so we're about about a year and a half apart. apart each of you, huh? And then later on in life, after my mom and my uh, dad had divorced, uh, I lived in a couple of foster homes, yeah. and uh, then ended up living with my grandpa and grandma in Provo. And oh. from that point, uh, I'd ended up. Uh, I'd ended up, uh, you know, uh, growing up a lot of my younger life in Provo with my grandpa and grandma. Yeah. And my mom, I guess I found out later in life that in 1983 she left the LDS church, but because I lived with my grandpa and grandma and they were strong LDS, uh, yeah. I didn't know much about that. Wow. And there's a whole story completely <laughs> on, on, on why I lived in foster yeah. homes and it's it would take a lot more longer than your half hour. <laughs> <laughs> but you had a testimony of the church. You were a good, faithful member. You went to seminary, right? Uh, I did go to seminary, and I did hold. Uh, well, what I was told I held is the Mel you know, the priest of the Aaronic and the Melchizedek yeah. later, and sure. <laughs> now you you ended up graduating from Hunter High School. Uh, yes. And. Uh, and but you graduated from seminary was uh, uh, yes actually I did graduate from seminary <laughs> yeah, good for you and uh, had a good testimony of the gospel did you ever share your testimony uh, you know I've to be honest with you uh, 
I don't know if I always had an exact testimony because I did have, I mean, I always tried to bear my testimony. I was not always the best at it. Uh, yeah. As a kid, when I lived with my grandpa and grandma in Provo, uh, they tried getting me to read the Book of Mormon. And to be honest, I really never could understand. I couldn't even hardly pronounce half the words in the Book of Mormon, let alone trying to read a, the Book of Mormon with one of those like pop bottle uh, magnifying, magnifying glasses tr holding it up like this yeah. I just couldn't it hardly understand it difficult probably for you to read it and as a kid I was the Bible was always uh, you know something that was never really mentioned it was only brought up just to try to make something in the Book of Mormon from what I have learned <laughs> later in life look better or yeah. to try to patch up something that was in the Book of Mormon and so I've never understood the scriptures very well. And you know, it's interesting as a youth, you, I mean, you probably just assumed or knew the church was true, right? I mean, well, isn't that kind you're, of you're what you're kind we, of taught that as a kid. And yeah. even like when I was eight years old, I remember that the, uh, the time I was going to get baptized, you know, I remember uh, in primary, they'd hold up different, uh, different props and they'd teach you about you know, as a kid, I remember, yes, sometimes they would teach you, but they'd tell you about Jesus, but they told you about Joseph Smith and... Yeah. And being baptized into the church. And, and Yeah, and yeah. that's one thing I realized. Is, and, and later on in life, I realized that, you know, you're, you're baptized a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. You're not, you know, you're not baptized in Jesus himself. And, yeah, and to use the name, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, I mean... You know, I realized if one, once religions, if re religion is no longer on the earth anymore, then if you don't have your uh, yourself planted in Jesus Himself, the one who actually created us by just speaking yeah. what He wanted to have spoken, you know, there's there's things we don't understand about about you know there's a lot of things we don't understand but at the same time uh, you know I'll I'll be honest that I believe that if you don't have yourself you know anchored in with our savior the one that saved us yeah you know to say we can't actually be you know we have to praise some other man you and know you find out that man's not what he what you who you thought and the he thing was. is is yeah, well, yeah. the thing is, is once you pray some, you know, man, that you're just forgetting about Jesus. And yeah. there's a lot of times I never heard about. I mean, you very, very seldom you hear about Jesus in the LDS church. And in, there's, the, in the meetings, that's right. Yeah. You know, it's all, and, and it, it's, yeah, it's just well, not very. As <laughs> kind of an aside for just a second, uh -huh. this is one of the things that, the reason we do this particular show is to show that there are Mormons who have actually transitioned out of Mormonism, but the good news is that they found Jesus and the Bible to be trustworthy. But what you're saying too is that the relationship often is with the church, and when a person finds out that there are problems with the church, historical and doctrinal, um, they don't have an anchor in Jesus, right? Well, yeah, and like, like I actually asked a question that was, we were in a, a uh, Gospel Essentials, uh, class and as a kid I was taught that if the Holy Spirit the Holy Ghost uh, whispers to you and says hey say something or do something you're supposed to do it or you'll lose the Holy Ghost it'll yeah, it won't talking to yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. yeah well so I asked the question a simple question what would happen if Adam and Eve wouldn't have partaken of the fruit not even before the class was over about 15 minutes or so before the class was over I was called to go talk to the bishop I went up and talked to the bishop, and he was very mad. He was like, oh, if, if, if you, you know, you're going to scare people away from the church if you, with that kind of question, you know, <laughs> you come to us and ask that question. And, you this know, really happened. Yes, and that, oh that right there said to me, you know, I started putting two, to, two, two and two together and realized, you know, you know, two and two is four, not ten. And yeah. when I did that, I said, hey, you know what, why is it that, you know, I mean, 
if it's if the truth is true then there should be no problem in it you know the spirit would tell that person who's brand new that's hearing that and you know they wouldn't be afraid to ask any questions they wouldn't be afraid and, yeah. and you know I realized that and I just said to myself you know and there's a lot of times just throughout my whole history uh, I do believe looking back that I'd ended up when I was getting baptized I believe I was nervous about it and because there's so many you know you kind of feel as a, and especially if you're disabled in the church uh, whether it's you're in a home ward as a kid or you're out on your own and you go to a single adult ward or you know there's a lot that over the years helped me realize and and I believe it and it, I, I believe it's just a progressive thing but a lot of people I know I was kind of scared as a especially being disabled because are you saying that people judge you or that you're not welcomed is are you saying that or well am I not putting words in your mouth oh no, no. You, what are you saying pretty much uh, the thing is is uh, when I uh, like like when I was younger uh, I used to go to a young adult singles ward okay and uh, later on I had ended up uh, you know I had ended up uh, you know turning 31 now when you, once you turn 31 you uh, can't go to the young adult singles 18 to 30, ward, 30 or something yeah well and it really picked up around that time it got to where I started really thinking harder and I said okay you know, I can't, uh, you know, I had to, uh, in order to join the 31 to 45 single adult award. And so you couldn't go to the other one because, because you turned 31. And the thing is, is this other one was no long, it was not on a bus route or a light rail route like the 31 to 45 up. I mean the 30, I mean the, sorry, yeah. the 18, 18 to 30. 30. So it was harder was, for you to get to where you needed to go. And so the bishop basically said, there's all these stipulations you have to be able to do in order you know you have to drive yourself you have to have a job you have to earn money you have to pay your tithing you have to have a temple a full temple recommend you have to a whole list of things one thing it. you mentioned was that you had to earn three times the minimum wage was that, that really a requirement that that's what the bishop said and i don't know if he was just saying that oh. because he wanted to make sure that to separate the you know to make sure i had enough money or he yeah. i don't know if he just didn't want you know that but be bothered if if it just felt you know I told my mom this and just didn't feel welcome huh? my mom said you know it doesn't look like Jesus was at that church uh, Jesus would never tell you, you know, if if you said you needed help getting to and from church Jesus would say I'm gonna help you you're gonna get help I'll take care of it yeah. uh, and and so well, you know, I'd like to back up just a sure. little. You didn't go on a mission, but you did go through mm -hmm. the temple. You became an elder. Uh, yes. Uh, what was that like uh, to go through the temple? <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, you know, I was actually nervous the first time. Sure. And uh, and I guess a lot of people are. They don't, you know, understand. And it's kind of hard because before you go through the temple, they won't tell you anything that goes on in the temple. Right. And the problem that I had was... Uh, that uh, basically when I went through the temple uh, you know I couldn't remember I mean I couldn't even remember my name that I was given I couldn't remember you know any of that and then they told me oh you just got to go back again and again and if you go back and I thought when I was in the temple or I was going to go to the temple I thought you know, hey, if that's where God is, then be a wonderful spiritual experience. I'll be able, well, I'll be able to see people. And I always hear these stories about you know people that's gone to the temple and they saw their loved ones and yeah. and you know I'm not going to say that people have never seen because I'm sure there's many miracles that God can bring to people. But later on, when I learned about how the temple and I watched different videos because I searched for different things and I yeah. found videos that where this guy explained about how the signs and everything in the temple are and he compared them to the mason and Masonic, put everything yeah. side by side and you know right there and then word I just, for word it was yeah. just like the words were changed a little bit yeah. 
but they're basically exactly the same thing and yeah. and anything that is of God there is no way in any way you know it, it would not follow anything else on earth if it's from God it would be so different that nobody could ever match it <laughs> and that raised a question in that, your mind huh? that really I think that would have to really confirm that yeah. I know for a fact that that the LDS Church is not a true church and that and you know I could probably go on for ever <laughs> Oh, so wh anything else happened that started question making may well, you question the church? Uh, you know, as a matter of fact, my friend uh, Sheila Miles had, uh, and I've known her for a while. She actually went to school with me. Mm -hmm. I met her in uh, junior high, and I'd moved from my grandpa and grandma's in Provo to my dad's in West Valley. And uh, the thing is, is uh, I'd ended up realizing uh you know you know she actually she was actually lds herself and then she ended up leaving the church because she found out that it wasn't true and she started sharing with you and then you know she between her my mom and i did meet some different people down by temple square because at the time i was right about a year or two uh april 1st was actually my one year mark when i was officially out of the 2013 yeah okay. yeah this this last April, uh, no, no, this this of 2014, it was my one year one mark. Year okay. So, uh, it was, in, it was, uh, yeah, yeah, it was as of. Okay. So it was one year. Yeah. And, and you ran into some people on the by Temple Square. Uh, yeah, and and I actually talked to a few different people, and as a matter of fact, you know, I guess a lot. Some people will, when they're, they 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 see certain truths but that yet at the same time they're scared about what their family and friends are going to say you know that they feel like they want to leave but they are afraid to leave so it took a while uh and i think you're absolutely <laughs> right there are people you know one minute i felt good about something that was said and you know as uh as you know each uh as you know as each person taught different things you know i guess and it's still kind of a shock, even though I'm not LDS anymore. I realized that. I realized what it's like, uh, leaving, and and yes, there was a lot of family that that kept, uh, you know, saying you, you know you shouldn't be leaving, and sure, and you know, but well, what did she share with you? What kind of things did you learn from her? Oh, uh, from uh, uh, my friend. From that Sheila? Uh, I actually learned a lot. She actually was able to help, cause since she knows I'm legally blind, she was able to help me find different things and was able to explain different things about uh, the LDS Church. What was the most shocking thing well, you learned? A lot of or it a was... A couple of shocking things. A lot of it was like like she explained about how the Book of Mormon and the, uh, you know, how there's a lot of things that were plagiarized and taken from the Bible and put in the Book of Mormon. Mm -hmm. You know, even and, with the biblical errors, <laughs> and she actually ended up. Her and her current husband ended up uh, reading over the phone because they don't live in Utah anymore. They she he actually is from here, yeah. but uh, she met a nice guy in uh, Kansas moved and away, huh? moved to Kansas, <laughs> yeah. and then ended up. But over the phone and over the internet would read the Bible and try to explain uh, things like. Like when I was taught as a kid, you know, you're a, you're actually a, you know, God. There's God. There's uh, Jesus, and then there's you know the three people, and right, that's know, what Joseph Smith saw, they, so presumably. And they and they explained to me it's kind of like, and even my mom explained the same thing is, there's ice, water, and uh, and uh, steam, and they all are the same thing. It's just that, you know, when they come. You know that was just kind of explained to me, and which you know helped me understand a little more that more of the Trinity that it's not this separate person; it's one that has come down. You know, and and there's a lot that I believe we don't understand, and I believe that yeah. God's gonna maybe one day just say, "Okay, you know what? I'm gonna explain more to you now. You couldn't, <laughs> as a human, you can't. It's hard to comprehend grasp. God, isn't it? I mean." Yeah. 
But you know, Isaiah tells us that there's only one God, and Isaiah also tells us that um, uh, that Jesus will be the mighty God, the everlasting Father. And even in Matthew 1, it says, Emmanuel, God with us. So we definitely believe Jesus is, is God, right? And then he said he'd send his spirit, which, yeah. you know, and I, it's really disturbing when I was told as a kid that you're, uh, you're uh, you know, if you, you know, because I was always taught, now everyone has the light of Christ, but unless you're baptized, you get the gift, the of, gift the of the Holy Ghost. And that's stronger. And, you know, from that point, uh, even once I received even the Melchizedek priesthood and I went to go give a blessing, you know, I always thought that God was talking, you know, from above down to me through you and through then through me and then yeah. I would speak. And when I went to give the blessing, I couldn't think of one, I mean, in order so that nobody else would un wonder what's going on. I kind of just remembered the situation of the person and had to pretty much just put what I was getting. You, you felt know, like you were doing like I had the inspiration. Just, <laughs> I just had to do it. And yeah. and then, you know, some people were like, well, were you worthy? And it's just, you have to so be it worthy. So was your fault, huh? And, and the thing is, is there's this, <laughs> it, I just don't feel like that's right. I mean, yeah. you know, if what anything that comes from God shouldn't be something that anyone else can make up. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Well, what do you, what have you learned about grace and works? What, what would you share with the audience uh, about grace and works? What, how do you feel about what Jesus has done for us? Well, I mean, it, it doesn't make sense that as a, uh, you know, with, with, uh, see with grace, you're not, you know, the, He's done everything for you. I mean, he all he said is something so simple as, "Follow me." I and, am the way, the truth, you know, and the life. Yeah, yeah, he, you know, you, you know, Jesus is the, you know, if you need light, Jesus is your light. If you need water, Jesus is your water. Yeah. I mean, if he created, which I know, he, I believe he created everything. I mean, air, yeah. we breathe. You know, he created the ground that we walk on he created everything we you know we might put something together but yeah. that doesn't matter right we couldn't put it together without him creating it and he gave us this free gift with his sacrifice on the cross didn't he yes yeah i believe he did yeah and what does that what does that meant to you compared to your time as a mormon did you ever believe or understand that concept of grace actually as a not really because I mean, they would actually, they, they, like, like in church, they would talk about grace. We're saved by grace after all we can do. All we do. And, yeah. and like, as an example, uh, I was in an elder quorum one day, and, uh, you know, the, we, were, we were having this discussion about how we're supposed to love our neighbor and help our neighbor. And, yeah. and you know, and if you're graceful, it, it, you're going to help your neighbor, not because you're told to do it. You're going to do it because you want to do it. And... And, you know, being taught all of that, I left church and I was on my way home. And it was actually the, uh, f the Chris around Christmas time, it was the First Presidency's uh, Christmas, Christmas yeah. devotional that they have at the conference center. Yeah. And they had ended up uh, telling me, uh, I, I'd, I mean, I'd ended up leaving. And as I was crossing the light rail tracks, my chair quit working on me. Hmm. And the... Uh, Luckily, there was someone who that this guy and his wife were having lunch, and they were crossing the street, and they saw it, and they helped me get off the light rail tracks. And then other people helped me get home. But once I got home, I called the bishop, and I said, I really need some help. I've And I ended up the next day calling the wheelchair shop. They couldn't come out right away to help get, uh, get it fixed. my chair fixed. And they said, well, if you can have someone in your ward bring your chair down, we can send the loaner chair back with them that you can use until we can get to your chair. And I had appointments that week that actually took more than six months for me to actually get. And I was going to, I ended up missing my appointments that week because every time I asked the bishop if he could get someone to help me do done, it. Huh? And he said, oh, I'm sorry, there's nothing we can do to help you. Uh, 
Hmm. Wait for the wheelchair shop. Wow. And, you know, from the stories I heard about the pioneers coming into the valley in 1847, uh, and everyone was in this general conference, and all of a sudden one of those uh, wagon parties had a problem, they all dropped general conference instantly and ran out and helped no. them, which... And it is a Christ like. like you didn't feel like you got that support, I guess. You know, and that, and that would be like a graceful thing that you'd think if you were believing in Christ. Yeah. Well, that's interesting. We're actually running out of time, believe it oh, or well, not. Your time has gone very, the time's gone very quickly. What, what would you say to the LDS people that might be listening and uh, I w- share, share your thoughts? I would like to just say to people who are LDS, especially people who are disabled that are LDS, I know that it's even harder in the world today whether you're disabled uh, especially if you're disabled it's very much harder because you have to do more to prove yourself to others and you have to uh, and it's just so hard because of that and and believe me once you leave the LDS church and and put two and two together and Make sure that that adds up, and if it doesn't, something's wrong. Make sure that, and I know it's hard, especially if you have family that may or may not support you. Just, you know, find someone that does support you and, you know, ask questions. And and no question is a stupid question yeah. because you can't get an answer without a question. I always like the idea of reading a red letter Bible, you know, uh, that's been mentioned before, but just read the words of Jesus and the words of Paul and see what they said and, and more importantly what they didn't say because they don't talk about, in fact the Book of Mormon doesn't talk much about celestial kingdom and mm-hmm. eternal marriage and baptism for the dead even though the Book of Mormon's supposed to be the most correct book uh, on the face of the earth. Anyway, Adam, it's been wonderful to have you. I appreciate your story, and uh, gosh, you've uh, gone through so much, and I, I praise God that you're as mobile and you can get around the way you do, and we love you, brother, okay? All right. <laughs> and you take care. Well, we appreciate you watching tonight, and remember, think about the fact that you're following the gospel of Joseph Smith, another gospel, and, and not the gospel of Jesus Christ. Think about and see what he said in the Bible. Appreciate you watching. Good night.